Hello friends, welcome. My name is Lucia Radetsky. I am a health coach and a Christian. And today we're going to be talking about what it means to be the light and what it means to be the salt of the world. And especially in these days, right, when everything is so chaotic and tribulations have come already, and many of you already know that the rivers have turned to be red and there's so many pestilence going on and now with the smoke and the air being contaminated too. So there's a lot going on in the world worldwide, right? But for those of us who have been walking in Christ Jesus, this is only what we were expecting to happen, right? It's all biblical. And as much as people would like to try to come out with scientific explanations um, for this or that, the truth is that everything is brighted down on the Bible. And even if there is a, any kind of scientific explanation, we need to remember that even science comes from God because nothing in the world is out of God's eyes. So the Lord is Lord over the heavens, over the sea, and over the earth. And the Lord is Lord over the science too. So even when, <laughs> and this is funny, right? They find some kind of scientific explanation to say, no, this is weather change, or no, this is because of some dye that like dyed the river. You know, it doesn't really matter what is the, the underlying cause, which can be chemical, can be our own negligence. But at the end of the day, God allowed that to happen because it's part of the judgment. And it's part of what is written in the Bible that it was about to happen. And independently of what are the scientific explanations, whatever it is, at the end of the day, it is just proof of the word of God being fundamentally the truth that has been prospering, that has been always prevailing. And, you know, generations may pass and, and things may change and there's always going to be different challenges. But the word of God is always the same. The word of God will always be alive, will always be truth, will always be light and will always be the way. Now, you, if you are not a Christian, you may think like the way to, to what? The way to what? So when we are saying, the way to salvation. We're not just talking about salvation in terms of heaven. And, and yes, that, that's part of it. But we're also talking about salvation in our altar, in our hearts. Salvation in terms of preserving us, our family, and our faith in times of tribulations. And this is something very real. Because I know many of you are worried about survival. Um, for many of us, Soldiers in Christ or people who follow God, uh, wherever he, wherever God wants to take us, life, it's service, right? We're here on a mission. We're here for service. So we're not so attached in the same way. But I know many people are worried about, um, you know, dying, right? And about suffering because that's ultimately what people are scared of with either a flood or a, or a hurricane or with... Um, pestilence or famine or war, whatever happens is that it triggers us into that fear of not being able to survive. And now let me tell you why many Christians aren't even worried or scared. And the truth is that we have the light of Christ and that light is the truth. It's the Holy Ghost who had told us that in Christ Jesus, we have everlasting life. And so when you understand that, and you understand that Jesus Christ defeated death on the cross, and he did it for us while we were still sinners. So you understand that love, and the love of God, is the fundamental stronghold, the rock, in which many Christians are stepping in right now. So that's why a lot of tribulations, persecutions, and things may happen that are terrible, and Christians will not move, real Christians will not move because we understand that there's always going to be some kind of suffering. It's not just for Christians. Maybe you are not a Christian. You have not given your life to Christ yet and you still know what it's suffering, isn't it? True. You still know what it is to have a person that have been rude or mean or, or cruel to you. 
you still know what it is to have somebody ha had gotten sick or, or to struggle with poverty or to struggle with sin, with, with things that you can't control that you're doing that you don't like that are taking you to perdition, like addiction, for example. So suffering, it's an inherent part of life. And Jesus said, right, whoever does not hate their life, they do not know me. Because when we understand the spirit, the, the life that we have in Christ, the life in the world is just, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's not, it, it lasts its salt. Now, when we walk in Christ, when we are, members of the body of Christ, when we are walking in his life, in his truth, then we became the salt of the world. And so we are meant to still prevail and to still remain around in the world because we are to bring that light. We are to bring that salt. And if we are losing that passion, that fire for God, that desire to worship, that desire to praise, that desire to reach out to other people and say, hey, Christ changed my life. Then we're losing the taste in life. We're losing the point of why we're even in the world anyway. We're not just because our whole purpose for many of us, besides the many gifts that we have, besides, you know, all of the other purposes that we may have as Christians in our walk with Christ, the biggest purpose or one of the biggest purpose that we have is to be that light. And to be that light, that it's a light for everyone to see, a lampstand that we're not going to hide, right? It's a lampstand that we're going to put so everybody can see the word of God, everybody can see the light in Jesus Christ. And sometimes you don't even know what to do. But the key here is that you don't need to know because the light of Christ and his word and his truth and what he has done in your life, it's gonna just shine through you if you believe. The only thing you need to do is to believe Christ, to remain in prayer, to remain worshiping praising him and you're gonna see how your life is just gonna come and when you are in a dark place and even Christians are in, in dark places sometimes you know very often you are under warfare or you are under um, you know circumstances with family members uh, that are painful that you take to heart then in Christ Jesus you find shelter in Christ Jesus, you can find someone that is going to be there for you when nobody else is. Somebody that loves you and guides you in a way that nobody else catch you. And he loves you as you are. Even though there's many things that you still don't know about yourself, or you don't like about yourself, or you don't understand about yourself, God still loves you. And because he loves us first, is that we can love others. And that is the whole point of being that light of the world. To be able to love even our enemies. To be able to reflect his character. To follow him means to be Christ-like. Every day a little more to walk as he was walking in this earth. No matter what. Radical love radical forgiveness that is powerful and it's not it's not easy it's not gonna just um you know happen you need to work it out it's just like if you are um you know you you want to have some muscles right you're not gonna get muscles from one day to another you gotta work it out you gotta go to the gym and you need to work it out or at your house whatever you do but you need to work for that that work we call it sanctification which is the work of working towards a holy life to be closer to God and a lot of people who don't know Christ 
they see this from the outside they're like that's boring like i got all these last for the, these things like the parties and the, the people and you know the sex and all that and when you know christ and you have been there before and you have left that behind you understand that you're actually not losing anything but the people that don't know christ that never walked in the spirit they're missing out they're missing out on on a fulfillment in our heart that comes and will never leave you. And even in moments when we are desperate, we're crying, we don't understand why horrible things happen to us, evil and justice or things that are really hard to swallow, we still have our Lord Jesus Christ to take care of us. We don't feel alone, not even alone. We may fall, but he will raise us back up. And that light that he gave us to overcome, to overcome pain, to overcome tribulation, to overcome sickness, to overcome death, to overcome grief, to overcome addiction, to overcome everything that's going on in your life. That light, which is in truth, in the word of God, it is the side that makes our food tasty. And so here's the thing, friends. If you don't know Christ, if you have never welcomed talking about necessarily a particular church that's up to you i'm talking about christ i'm talking about jesus christ and i'm talking about the bible the god jacob isaac and abraham or god or lord the only god if you don't know jesus christ you don't understand god you don't understand his love his heart you may talk about his mercy you may talk about his love kindness, you may talk about everything you want, but if you don't know Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross, you won't really understand the very heart of God. And what, why had always God chosen people that were not perfect, that were not, you know, proud or, or, or so rich or, you know, God's people, the people that he has chosen, many times were humble. Many times were sinners that were converted into holy people. But the thing is that the light of God has the power to completely dissolve the darkness. I have seen it. I'm a witness of that. When Christ, and when I'm talking about Christ, I don't want you to figure out like some ideas that you have in mind for a TV show or something. I'm talking about the word of Christ and I'm talking about the heart and the mind of Christ, the way of Christ, which has to do with love, with faith, with forgiveness, and with radical honesty and radical righteousness. I'm talking about a righteousness that blessed the whole world. So that light of Christ can be in people even before they get to know God. They get to know in the word of God the true character and what God wanted from us. And that might be a little hard for some people to listen, but that is the truth because God picks people from the womb, especially his prophets. But God picks people from the, from the womb. So even if someone has not yet, say this person doesn't know how to read, but they have not yet read the word, they still have that light of Christ. Not everyone. I'm talking about some people, the chosen people of God. Now the Lord knows them. There are hairs of him. So he knows them and he will call him and eventually they're going to get to his word. So if you are feeling like in these times, you are a a person that usually cares for other people. You are a person that, that likes to go the extra mile, that likes to be the light for the world, that likes to be there for others, truly. A person that it's humble, a person that it's forgiven, it's empathic. Then I feel that it's important for you more than ever in your life to take aside all, all perjuice, all, all, 
preconceptions about religion, about church, about the priest, about the, the bishops, whatever it is that you have in your mind that Christ is. I want you to take it all out. You can think about it later. And I want you to go into the narrow gate. I want you to go into the gate that you can only get if you know Jesus Christ. Do you know who is Jesus Christ? So that light that I'm talking about, maybe you already had it. Maybe Christ already chosen you. If you consider yourself a chosen one, where did, where did that come from? What is a chosen one anyway? Chosen one, it's a person that God has picked from the one to follow him. And maybe you weren't even religious. Maybe you never, you know, you, you either were hurt, which is very common because, you know, the agents of the darkness are going to infiltrate some institutions, some churches, some places to even families that say that they are religious and they're not to like trust, to, to change the way how you understand Christ. But ultimately, if you are a chosen one, the light of Christ is in you. Now, the thing is that you have a huge responsibility then. If, the, if, if this person I'm talking to, you might not even be religious. You might not want to have anything to do with it. But you are called to serve humanity. You feel like you need to help. You feel like you need to care for the poor. You, need, you feel like you need to help other people. And, and you can even lay down your life for others. That is Christ in you. That is the light of the world. And now listen, I'm going to read because I have some food for thought. In Second Chronicles, in the chapter 20, the verse 21, it says, when, sorry, the verse 20, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. So, if you are a person that has this light, that has this, this desire to do good, Christ is calling you. And yes, I'm not going to lie to you. It is not easy, but neither is easy to walk in the world, and especially not in judgment times. So I encourage you to read the word of God, and I encourage you today to even confess. Confess. For yourself out loud. Say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe he died for me on the cross. He rose three days after resurrected. And he died for my sins on that cross. And he defeated sin. He defeated death. He defeated darkness. And in Jesus' name, you will find salvation. And not just salvation later on, but salvation that you may walk in his light. And I'm not going to say that things are not going to happen to you. I'm not going to lie. Things are going to still be hard. But you will be covered because he keeps you behind his wings. And I'm a mighty testimony. Everybody that knows me knows that the enemy may strike, but I still am still covered. Isn't that the truth? I'm still covered. Who is covering me? the Lord, God, Jesus Christ, because those who put their trust on Jesus will not be put to shame and will not be disgraced. And yes, things are going to happen to us, trial, tribulation, pain, despair, all of that. We all have it, everyone, Christians and non-Christians. But when we have Christ, we have the rock for our salvation. And when you develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit that comes by reading the Word, that comes by asking the Holy Spirit to come to you, to be around the apostles, to be around the, the, the prophets, to pray when you have the Holy Spirit with you, 
that's the light that is going to let you know, because light also means knowledge, it's going to let you do what to do, where to, where, how to move, where to go. Because in the Bible says, do not live in your own understanding. And why? Because the thoughts of God are greater than all thoughts. So God understands and sees things that are happening even years after, you know? So he knows, say, for example, you want to take this path. But that path, it's actually not the best one for you. And God knows because that path will not allow you to grow in a certain way or to help certain people. And in the other way, sometimes you might experience delays, sometimes you might experience hardships, but a lot of the things that happen to you at the end of the day are there to prosper you, to prosper someone that needs your help. Everything has a higher meaning in the mind of God. So that's why we need to trust and we need to welcome the Holy Spirit to be that light in our own life at all times. Let's read now in, in the chapter 4 of the book of Matthew, uh, which is one of the books that I recommend you to start reading if you have never opened a Bible before. The book of Matthew is very, very interesting. Also the book of Sean, also the, the Psalms. If you're going for a hard time, they're, they're very interesting. Um, but I want to call your attention now to the chapter 5, the verse 13. And it says in, in red, which is the word of Christ, is in red. Believers have salt and light. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So with this means that when we are following Christ, we are meant to be on fire for him. We are meant to praise him in good times, in bad times, in whatever moment we are, we're still meant to reach out to other people, to find a way to help, to find a way to, to show up for someone else. Whatever way that is that you have. Maybe it's knocking on the door of a neighbor. Maybe he's um, giving, don donating some food or helping, volunteering. Whatever you find, that is the way that you have to share that light. That is what God has put in your heart. And that's one of the things that he wants you to do if you have decided to follow Christ. Now, if you have the light of Christ, and you keep it all just for yourself, you just pray for yourself, or you're just always keeping that for yourself, not trying to help anyone to come closer to that light, then you need to understand that you're being selfish because that light is not for you to hide it and to keep it like if it is only your treasure. It is a light to bring knowledge and to bring the love of God to the people because everybody needs to hear who Christ is. So Christ may have done things for you your whole life, even if you have never come to the Bible or to a church, Christ still had been protecting you, still had been speaking and ministering to you, to many of you. So you need to share that light with others because that mercy that Jesus Christ had brought upon your life, that grace that he gave you, now you have the job to spread it. You have the job to use that anointing all of gladness you have in yourself to really bring Christ for others so others can see the light, so others can follow Christ. And every person that is illuminating their lamp, every person that is bringing the light of Christ, which is there is no other light. That is the truth because love comes from God. If you feel love for anyone, that is God. If you read the Bible, you can understand what I'm saying. 
any kind of love you feel for your children, your family, your neighbor, comes from God. So without God, there is no light, there is no love. When we are all joining together with all light, the darkness of the world, it gets completely dissolved in Jesus' name. So, my friends, let's read one more before we close this, um, this video today. And so I want to read you the song of Mary because we were reading about, you know, singing as a way of bringing that light. You can find many ways. It can be through art can be through street preaching, can be through knocking on your neighbor's door, can be just like, you know, baking something and offering something for someone else that has no food that day. Can be, um, you know, washing someone else's um, car that they, they need or clothes, you know, that they need, they, they need a hand. Just spreading that love, spreading the light. It's bringing a little bit more of Christ. And it's also keeping you in that light and it's going to take you out of darkness, out of depression, out of anxiety, out of, out of fear. When you are able to do something for someone else, whatever that is, in whatever way you find, you're going to see how the light of God and the Holy Spirit starts shining through you. And the more that you read the Word of God, the more that you understand, and especially if you start, start reading the New Testament, you're going to be filled with that light and with that knowledge and with that truth. And then you're going to be ready for what's coming. Now, let's close this beautiful, beautiful... Um